Dear students, in this session, we will discuss how to improve the differential amplifier performance using a constant current source. So far in the differential amplifier discuss, we use the combination of resistance RE and minus VEE to produce the emitter DC bias current. So earlier discussion we all we did like that you were having here RE and minus VE to produce the emitter base current. Now actually for a good differential amplifier expecting a large differential gain AD differential gain we will write as AD which is very large compared to common mode gain AC because Common mode rejection ratio ability of the circuit should be improved by making common mode gain as small as possible. If larger the value of emitter resistance, smaller will be the common mode gain. Hence, our main aim is to increase the value of emitter resistance. So simply if you are increasing the emitter resistance there will be some other problem. So we cannot use a high resistance at the emitter. So we have to go for some alternative circuit to produce a high emitter resistance. So the alternative circuit what we can use is a constant current source. So by using a constant current source the DC bias current is considered as better as it provides current stabilization and assures a stable operating point for differential amplifier. So in this figure we can see a practical constant current source with a high impedance. So this will provide a act as a current source. So this one shows actually the ideal current source. See you can see from the emitter you have a current source connected with a parallel resistance RE. This resistance is assumed to be very high. This is the ideal current source as you have studied in your DC electrical, AC electrical circuit analysis all these things. So all of you must be having a good idea about what is a current source. Now this is actually an ideal one. So for a circuit, for practical case, we have to use some extra components to generate this ideal, generate this current source. So here the constant current source, here the constant current source is achieved by the transistor Q3 along with the bias resistance R1, R2 and the emitter resistance RE. So that DC collector current of the transistor is established by these three resistors. The DC collector current IC3 is generated with the, these three resistors R1, R2 and RE. So how to write the equation, get to the equation for IC3 in the circuit. So we have to derive it uh, by using your KVA loop equation or by voltage divider formulas and all those things. So the same figure I am, I pasted across here in this slide and I have written the equation step by step equations here, the derivation. So you can see that how you, we basically we want the value of IC3. So for getting IC3, IC3 means our normal concept, uh, I'll write it and show you. Actually, uh, IC3 means IC3 should be equal to the current IE3. And IE3 means the emitter current IE3 you can calculate as the emitter voltage, the voltage at this point. The voltage means it contains VE3 and VEE. So I can write as VE3 plus 
VEE e divided by the resistance only RE. So this is the way I should get the value of IC3. IC3 I can get like this way. So I am not that familiar with writing with a pen. So uh, that is the reason some lines will come in between. So now we will derive it how, how to get the value of IE3. Now for getting IE3, first we should write what is VB3. This is the y, uh, means uh, this one is VBE3, the voltage VB3, voltage at the base. VB3 is nothing but the voltage across the resistance R2. So I can write as VB3 should be equal to VR2. Now what is VR2? VR2 should be equal to R2 multiplied by the voltage R2 multiplied by the current in this loop. Current is nothing but the voltage VEE. So you need to assume the current in this direction. So VEE divided by R1 plus R2. That is the current multiplied by R2. Now apply KVL inside this loop. This is VBE3. VBE3 means it is constitute of R1 this voltage along with the VEE. -E. So I am applying KVL in this loop. So this is VBE3. Say so writing plus here and writing minus here. Plus to minus VBE3. So minus to plus VBE3. This is the NPN transistor base to emitter voltage. This is the base. This is the emitter. So base NPN, base will be positive, emitter will be negative. So it is a plus to minus, minus VBE3, 3 comes for transistor Q3, okay. Now uh, minus plus to minus VE3. So this emitter voltage I will write here, it is VE3, voltage across RE. So that should be equal to 0. Now rearranging the equation, I will write as uh, VE3 I take to the side. So VE3 should be equal to VB3 minus VBE2. Now we have the value of VB3. This is VBE3. This value you already got from this equation. So I am substituting the value over here in the place of VBE3. So I substituted the value here. That one that is VBE3 minus VBE3. So now you know that IE3 or IC3 should be equal to VE3 plus I told you already here by RE. Now substitute the value of VE3 from this equation that is this. This you need to substitute here. So you are getting as IC3 as substitute the value you will get like this. Now what is IC3? IC3 this one is a IE1. This is a IE2. So IE1 plus IE2 should be equal to IC3. That means if both the transistors are assumed to be equal Q1 and Q2 equal. So IE1 is equal to IE2. So IC3 that is our earlier assumption. So IC3 should be 2 times IE2. In your DC analysis we have done the same manner. So I can write as IC3 is equal to or IE1 is equal to IE2 is equal to IC3 by 2. So divided by 2 you will be getting the value of IC, IE1 and IE2. Rest all the calculation will be similar to your previous one. Now uh, here the collector current IC3, the collector current IC3. The collector current IC3 of the transistor Q3, Q3 form the, uh, getting from IE1 and IE2 of the transistor. So adding IE1 and as I told you IE1 plus IE2 will be IC3. Now uh, actually both the value IE1 and IE2 are fixed while it is invariant. Both are same type of transistors. And we are not connecting any input signal. 
So the transistor Q3 is the source of constant emitter current for the transistor Q1 and Q2. So IE1 and IE2, this transistor Q1 and Q2 are getting from this IC3. IC3 is generated by this extra circuit. Now we have seen in the analysis, earlier analysis of D2S differential amp amplifier circuit with emitter bias, RE must be as large as possible compared to the internal resistance RE dash, small RE dash. Thus, constant current bias in addition to supply of constant emitter current also provides a very high resistance. This is because AC equivalent of a DC source is ideally an open circuit. That's important. AC equivalent of a DC circuit source always ideally an open circuit. Thus, all the performance equations derived for your earlier differential amplifier configurations in the section earlier section with emitter bias are also valid here with the same constant bias current source with the same constant current source all other equations are remains the same. So that's about uh, differential amplifier with constant current source. Thank you.